the most horrific murders you will ever hear. It got bad and Blackwell got angry and started hitting his father with the claw hammer he was still holding in his hand. His mother, who was in the kitchen, ran into the room holding a knife and saw her son brutally beating her. Husband. She tried to stop Blackwell but he snatched the knife from her grip and stabbed her up to thirty times, mostly in the chest, killing her. Then he returned to his father, who was not yet dead, and after holding his hand and telling him he was sorry, stabbed him to death. Here is the full true story of Brian Blackwell's most horrific murder that you have never heard of before. Brian Blackwell was born in 1986, an only child, to Sydney, a retired accountant, and Jacqueline, an antiques dealer. When Blackwell was two years old, his parents, described as a gentle, sturdy couple, moved to the affluent Merseyside village of Melling, where they bought a three-bedroom bungalow. Blackwell was seen as a nice but somewhat lonely boy, and it was not easy for him to make friends, either at school or in the home environment. He was an exemplary student at school, and as a teenager his friends nicknamed him, Brains. He studied for his A-levels at Liverpool College and decided to become a surgeon. Blackwell's doting and supportive parents had high hopes for their son, believing he had the potential to become a great surgeon. Blackwell was a pathological liar with a tendency toward grandiosity. He liked people to think he accomplished things, which in reality he did not. His friend Amal Saba was the daughter of Jordanian doctors and a fellow student at Liverpool College. She succumbs to Blackwell's extravagant lies about his lifestyle, and although he can play tennis fairly well, he convinces her that he is a professional tennis player, with a £70,000 Nike sponsorship deal and a place in the French Open. He even asked her to be his manager, and in April 2004 wrote her a salary check for £39,000, even though he only had 9p in his account at the time. The check given to Saba bounced due to a lack of funds and a desperate desire to keep up appearances. Blackwell went to the bank in May 2004 and withdrew £9,000 from an investment account set up by his parents to pay for his university education. He convinced the bank to give him the money, telling them that his father had died and he needed to buy himself a car. In fact, he used the money to buy a new Ford Ka car for Saba for £6,500. Upon discovering what Blackwell had done, his shocked and grief-stricken parents demanded that Saba return the car. After much debate, it was decided that she would keep the car but pay the money back. Blackwell said that would only serve to insult him. Needing money to support his grandiose lies, Blackwell made numerous applications for credit cards and bank loans. In June 2004, Mrs. Blackwell discovered the deception and went to the bank manager to explain to him about her son and his disturbing behavior regarding financial matters. Despite his parents' knowledge of his fraudulent handling of their money, on July 24, 2004, Blackwell used his father's credit card to make first-class flight reservations from Manchester to New York for himself and Saba. The next day, he accompanied his father to a sports center in Kirby, where Mr. Blackwell spoke to friends with pride about his son's hard work and relentless determination to do well at A-level. The next day, July 25, 2004, Blackwell was at home hanging pictures in his bedroom. His parents had gone out to dinner and when they returned home, the family sat in the living room to have some drinks. The conversation quickly turned into an argument between Blackwell and his father. It got bad and Blackwell got angry and started hitting his father with the claw hammer he was still holding in his hand. His mother, who was in the kitchen, ran into the room holding a knife and saw her son brutally beating her. Husband. She tried to stop Blackwell but he snatched the knife from her grip and stabbed her up to thirty times, mostly in the chest, killing her. Then he returned to his father, who was not yet dead, and after holding his hand and telling him he was sorry, stabbed him to death. After the brutal attack, Blackwell took himself and his girlfriend on their scheduled holiday to the United States. The couple stayed for three nights in the presidential suite at the Plaza Hotel in New York, dining on truffles and champagne, at a cost of around £2,200. They then traveled to Miami, San Francisco and Barbados. Blackwell spent a total of £30,000 on his father's credit cards and his behavior throughout the trip was upbeat and normal. 
Saba had no idea that her boyfriend was a killer and that his victims, his parents, were lying in pools of blood in their home, yet to be discovered. Returning to England on August 12, 2004, Blackwell stayed with Saba and her parents, saying, he was banned from leaving his home until his parents returned from their holiday in Majorca. A week later he received his A-level results from Liverpool College, which included a grades in mathematics, biology, chemistry, and Spanish. He was also accepted into the University of Nottingham to begin his studies in medicine in October. After receiving his results, Blackwell met his school principal and they had a lively discussion about Blackwell's excellent results and his rosy future as a doctor. Again, there was nothing in Blackwell's conduct or conduct to suggest that anything was wrong. The Blackwells were not missed by neighbors at first, as the couple regularly vacationed in Spain. However, on September 5, 2004, a neighbor went to visit and noticed a foul odor coming from Blackwell's home and notified the police. They arrived immediately and discovered the bodies, seriously injured and decomposed. Given the condition of the bodies, police initially believed the couple had been shot. Mr. Blackwell was sitting in an armchair in the living room, still holding his glasses, and Ms. Blackwell's body was dragged into the bathroom and left lying face down. A post-mortem examination revealed that the Blackwells were murdered sometime in July 2004. Aftermath Will we ever find motivation? No one will ever truly know what prompted Blackwell to kill his parents, but thanks to his case, narcissistic personality disorder is now considered under British law to be a serious mitigating circumstance in murder cases. Little is known about narcissistic personality disorder. Psychiatrists don't know what causes it and have little idea how to treat it. All they can really do is diagnose it. Blackwell had no evidence of a troubled background, which confused most people who were trying to find motives for his heinous and seemingly unjustified actions. Mostly, there was an overwhelming feeling of sadness for the entire Blackwell family and their dismal fate. Trial Narcissist Nine months after his arrest, Blackwell's trial began in June 2005 at Liverpool Crown Court, with Mr. Justice Royce presiding, with David Steer, prosecuting. A team of five psychiatrists examined Blackwell and unanimously agreed that he suffered from Narcissistic Personality Disorder, NPD. People with this disorder typically fantasize about unlimited brilliance, power, and success, and will often erupt into inappropriate rages if their fantasies are challenged or threatened. They are very selfish, have a strong sense of entitlement, and always need to be praised and treated like royalty by everyone. The reason people with BPD are so convincing to others is that part of them believes their own inflated fantasies. Steer described Blackwell as a very abnormal young man, adding that the diagnosis of borderline personality disorder was unusual for someone his age. He also stated that there was no indication that the murders were premeditated. In a letter read in court, Blackwell wrote, Every moment of every day, I wish I could turn back the hands of time. I forever long to be a little kid again in a time when everyone really loved each other, when we can have a happy time and be a family again. I miss them more than anything in the world. The guilt will punish me and haunt me 24 hours a day for the rest of my life. They stopped him. This may have sparked a rage that drove him to kill. However, there was only evidence to testify despite the fact that Blackwell's parents were loving and supportive of him, Blackwell suffered from severe borderline personality disorder, and although cases of minimization of responsibility are very rare these days, Judge Royce granted the motion to dismiss the murder charges in favor of manslaughter. Blackwell admitted he was charged with manslaughter with reduced responsibility and was sentenced to life imprisonment on June 29, 2005. The judge added that Blackwell, in his opinion, would never be eligible for release. Arrest Admission of guilt Due to the fact that immediate family members are always considered suspects in crime cases, Blackwell was needed for interrogation. On September 8, 2004, police arrested Blackwell at his girlfriend's home in Childwall, Liverpool and detained him for questioning. During police interviews, Blackwell tearfully admitted to killing his parents but said it was a split-second thing, and I couldn't believe what I did. 
he told investigators that before his father died, he went up to him, held his hand, and talked to him for a while, telling him he still he loves him. Shocked neighbors described Blackwell as a beautiful, quiet, intelligent young man, who played tennis and studied. Tough. None of them could believe that such a tragedy had befallen this seemingly nice and normal family. At the end of the video, do not forget to subscribe, activate the bell, and press like to encourage you. If you have any comments or suggestions, do not hesitate and leave them for us. See you in a new video.